All right. I'm going to call the November 21st Budget Committee for the Town of Hudson to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so for attendance, I see the entire budget committee has made it with the exception of Mr. Weisgarber, who will be excused today. Are there any members of the public that would like to make public input at this time? I will open public input at 7.03. Seeing none, we'll close public input. Mr. Walsh, do you have minutes from the previous uh, meeting to present at this time? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we have the minutes for the meeting on November 13th, 2024, as presented. All right. Uh, does anyone, any member of the committee, have any questions on the meeting minutes from November 13th? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to accept the meeting minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Jasper, seconded by Mr. Weary. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Today we will waive the uh, liaison reports for the Board of Selectmen and School Board unless there's any objection to doing so, so that we can get right to the nitty-gritty of today's meeting, which will be the proposed FY26 town budget wrap-up. So um, at this time, I would invite the town administrator, Mr. Steve Malizia. Good evening. Good evening. And you are uh, recognized to open up the uh, presentation of the fiscal year. Well, actually, before I begin, um, are you prepared to talk to the um, memorandum that we received from the fire chief? Uh, to some degree. I also have a proposed motion that we deal with that memorandum. So, yes, to some degree. Okay. So um, why don't we start with that? If that's what you'd like to do, that's fine. So I believe you all received a memorandum from the fire chief. Um, I believe it was emailed to you. I can't find my copy of it right now, of course. Here it is. In that um, memorandum, the fire chief upon, I think it was Mr. Jasper, um, had some questions vis-a-vis -vis the fire department's overtime budget. So the chief and his staff reviewed that data in, in, um, we have numerous vacancies in fire suppression, the budget that we're talking about. So what the chief had done was he had budgeted the vacancies, but he also budgeted overtime to cover the vacancies. So it appeared, based on his much deeper analysis, that we have too much budgeted in overtime, at least at this point. So having said that, the chief um, basically concluded that overtime, instead of being one point two three zero four five eight million should be nine hundred seventy thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars so that would be a reduction of an overtime of two hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred thirty three dollars and then there's pension and there's medicare so if the board would like i have some motions that you could make to reduce the budget and i believe overall that comes up to something like three hundred thousand something dollars so it's a it's a healthy recommend uh, uh, reduction so if you'd like i'll make the first propose the first motion you can debate it <clears throat> so the first motion would be to reduce 5730 105 suppression overtime from one million two hundred thirty thousand four hundred fifty eight dollars to nine hundred seventy thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars a reduction of two hundred fifty nine thousand five hundred thirty three dollars I'd like to make that motion I would like to second that motion okay so the motion has been made by um, uh, Ms. Uh, Jacoby, Jacoby. Mm -hmm. sorry, <laughs> took me a okay. second there. Uh, seconded by Mr. Jasper. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. Um, 
I guess I'd like to make a comment. Um, I, I really do appreciate the efforts of Chief Tice in, in taking the questions that this committee uh, brought forward to heart and actually uh, putting pen to paper and doing the right thing and proposing uh, a right-sized budget and reducing his outlay, and not by a little bit. This is a pretty uh, substantial reduction uh, of the, the original amount that was requested in the budget. So I really do uh, personally, and I'm sure that the members of the committee also share my, their appreciation as well uh, for the diligence of the chief and the rest of his department by making this proposal. That being said, is there any other discussion or questions? Yes, Mr. Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I think you know it, it makes sense looking at the history too. I mean, the, the, the outlier was fiscal 24 um, for 990. So I, I think looking at on average uh, for the last several years, I think this would be a, a reasonable amen, amount to cover overtime for fire suppression. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Any other questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So there is a second and third motion. The second motion, because you've reduced a, a budget that has uh, implications with Medicare tax, you would make a motion to reduce 5730-108 suppression FICA from $72,748 to $68,985, a reduction of $3,763. I would like to make that motion. Second. Right. Motion made by Ms. Jacoby and seconded by Vice Chair Rice. Any discussions? Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. And the third and final recommended motion on this would be motion to reduce 5730-114 suppression fire retirement from $1,445,249 to $1,369,595, a reduction of $75,654. I would like to make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Kobe. I'll second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Jasper. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So just for the record, all together, that total, $338,950. Savings. Savings. Yes. Reduction to the budget. That is correct. All right. That's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> so going back to the beginning, <laughs> there, were, there had been some questions, I think. Um, I believe you've already been emailed information, but just in case you didn't see it, there was a couple of questions about IT. Mm -hmm. So there's a document there, IT cost centers. It illustrates this year's proposed, or fiscal 26's proposed budget versus fiscal 25, the current budget. And you can clearly look down. I think I annotated or marked what sort of went up and what sort of went down. Um, quite simply put, in some cases, we're at the mercy of licensing and vendors. Um, that's the cost of our doing business. So I just provided you with the 25 and the 26 budgets so that you could compare and contrast just to see what the differences are. I believe the IT director had already emailed everybody. I'm assuming, at least I saw something. So, the second document I had passed out was the fire suppression overtime, but you've already pretty much disposed of that. As you can see, the trend, the number you just approved, is much more in keeping with the historical pattern. So. You've already taken care of that item. Um, so, with that said, the next somewhat thick document is the budget summary. So if you take a look at this document, this has not been adjusted for what you just did. It's before you, before that action. But in essence, this is sort of where things stand coming into tonight. Um, the Board of Selectmen at the last meeting voted to request that you add Thirteen thousand two hundred dollars for two poll pads to the moderator's budget. If I recall correctly, there was a discussion. We looked at potentially adding two poll pads, so that's what the board of selectmen voted to ask. Mr. Weary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I I would um, like 
because we're heading into a year with just town elections, I think that the poll pads, uh, I think we probably have sufficient poll pads for the town elections. I think we would be better served to, uh, I'm, I'm not one for kicking the can down the road, but I think we would be better served to postpone the purchase of those poll pads for a year in front of the midterm elections and then um, and I think also there's um, I, I think we also will need to look at uh, replacing the voting machines that we already have and so there's going to be some expenditures there because we have I think the old LHS machines that have um, I'm not sure they'll be approved by the ballot law commission very much longer and we may find ourselves in a position where we need to purchase those so I I would like I would propose that we actually hold off on this or not not recommend the purchase of the pull pads at this time but consider it for next year thank you mr. Wary uh, mr. Brown rig I'm gonna have to agree with him that um, the town monitor when he was here said we can always rent them because we don't always have the storage to put those someplace so renting them for the day would probably be easier than going to buy them, you know. And Paul said it's pretty easy to uh, to go rent. So I'd be more for renting them than buying them. Uh, Mr. Malizio, I think when the when the budget committee originally had the conversation, they were looking at the budget for the moderator, which for this fiscal year was one hundred and four thousand dollars, which because you had the presidential primary and whatnot. Fiscal year proposed for 26 is 34,000. I thought the thought process was you have the capacity now to absorb two machine, two poll pads, whereas a future year you're going to ramp back up because of the number of elections. I think that was the what the intent was. Mm -hmm. Certainly not disputing. I don't think you need them this election, but I think the intent was because the budget is at its lowest point because you only have one election. That was why the thought was, hey, go to the selectmen, see if they're interested, and that's why I came back and reported that to you. We certainly have the choice to do what you want. Thank you for that. Mr. Jasper. Um, I think it does make sense to, to purchase them now. I'm not sure that renting ever really works out that well because they have to make their money back. There's only you know, a limited number of times when you can rent the equipment, so in order to make their money, the, the rent over a very short period of time no doubt exceeds what uh, the cost is. They don't have to be ordered July 1st of 25. They can be ordered and encumbered just before the beginning of the next fiscal year, which amounts to essentially the same thing, but it helps level out that because we have such a low period now. I really think it, it makes sense to, uh, to, to put them in this budget but not buy them until the end of June, order them till the end of June of what would amount at that point to be June of 26 before we actually uh, bought them. And uh, that's, you know, I think then we don't kick the budget up unnecessarily in the next year, making that one look artificially higher because it will be so substantially higher than this budget, even if we add the cost of two poll pads. So, um, I would make the motion to add the two poll pads into the budget if you if you you'd like I'd read a motion for you yeah, motion please. to amend the moderator budget cost center five zero four one three four zero from two thousand dollars to fifteen thousand two hundred an increase of thirteen thousand two hundred to purchase two additional poll pads I have a question uh, I, for you mr. Malaysia um, is there any um, information that we have that there's an inflationary factor or the cost of these I don't uh, have any these of items are going up no. um, will they cost more in the out years if we wait a year we don't technology always costs more if you wait <laughs> maybe I can't tell you specifically if Possibly. I could I'd be in that business not this business All right. well, I would yeah, I would make the motion I have a question too well, we really ought to have the motion on the floor. I'd like okay. to be able to finish discussion. We didn't. Well, no. Well, we have, well, no, no hold it's on. not. Okay. Okay. It, okay. Members will be in order. Um, we can make a motion and still have a discussion after okay. the motion's made. So, uh, Mr. Jasper, would you like to make that motion? Yes, I would like to make that motion. All right. I'll second it. 
So a motion has been made by Mr. Jasper, uh, seconded by Ms. Jacoby. Any discussion? Mr. Rick. <laughs> Mr. Brown Rick. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Um, how much um, each of these uh, these pads? How much is one? So they're sixty three hundred, and I believe there's another three hundred dollar license charge. So six thousand six hundred dollars each for licensing charge for, so for the for the purchase and the and the license. Is that including the software? Yes. So we're talking uh, almost thirteen thousand dollars. We're talking thirteen thousand two hundred for two. Are they big? Are they they're small? Right? They're small. Yeah, probably like an iPad. If you know okay. what an iPad All looks right. like, I believe they're bigger than your phone, but not a laptop. It's a pull pad, so iPad type size thing. So how much are they again? Thirteen. The 000? actual purchase price is six thousand three hundred with another three hundred dollar license that you have to buy with it. So that's six thousand six hundred dollars each, or two is thirteen thousand two hundred. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Wary. Uh, again, I, I think you know, the turnout, the voter turnout for the midterms would suggest that we probably don't need them even at the midterm level. We probably only need them for the presidential because we already have a number of full pads. So um, I, I do understand you know, that technology does increase, but there uh, or the price of technology is likely to increase. But I also think if there is a later purchase, then theoretically the lifetime will extend uh, over the course. So um, my, my sentiment remains that I don't think we should approve this purchase at this time. Vice Chair Rice. So what is the... How do I want to put the life expectation of these poll pads? Like, how long do they last us? Do we know? I, I'm not an expert. I'm not, just, yeah, I'm not an expert to tell you. I, I, Ten years, that's probably my best guess at this point in time, at, at which point they might become obsolete. But I'm, I'm not an expert, and I don't want to pretend that I am. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. We're going to have to go <laughs> member by member. <laughs> uh, Mr. Weary? No. Mr. Walsh? No. Ms. Kennedy? Epstein? Mr. Brownrick? No. Ms. Boucher? Yes. Ms. Jacoby? Yes. Mr. Jasper? Yes. Vice Chair Rice? No. No? Well, the no's has it. Have it. The motion fails. So, I don't know, I'm not aware of any other actions that the committee wants to take on the general fund budget so that being the case I would recommend that you approve a motion to approve the FY 2026 general fund budget in the amount of thirty eight million seven hundred ninety one dollars seven hundred ninety one thousand one hundred one dollars which was the reduction of the three thirty eight nine fifty mr. Jasper I, I would like to talk about the uh, revenue and um, I guess it wouldn't hurt to Approve this motion and then so or there's this motion the sewer the water then the revenue is a separate motion. Okay mm -hmm. All so right, this is the gross budget that you're approving. All right. I will um, Make the motion as read by the town administrator I'll I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> Motion made by mr. Jasper seconded by mr. Brown rig any discussion Mr. Walsh Thank you mr. Chairman just looking at the budget uh, as it exists today, I was interested in looking at the number of vacant positions that are in the budget today. Mm. <clears throat> when you look at the total labor and benefits, it comes to some $2,745,000. That's, that's excluding the sewer and water. So that's 7%. It's actually probably a little bit more now. It's almost like 8% of the budget. When you look at the total amount of labor and 
benefits uh, for the uh, for the budget it's over ten percent so th this is something that's it's not that it's unprecedented in the town but it's something that is for the number of years that we've seen very low turnover in staffing for the town so um, I guess I'm, I'm concerned that um, when we look at this budget, which is still considerably higher than the default budget, people lose track of the fact that we're assuming we want to have a full um, complement of personnel in, in the town and all of our departments. If you look at the fire department, there's one, two, three, four, five, two, four, five, six positions that are open and vacant according to what we've seen including one is, I believe it's been vacant for two years, which is the fire department support services. Uh, police is two, four, six, police. So this is something that we see on the town, on the, on the school district side when we look at the, the budget impact of vacancies. So I'm just very uh, concerned. I wanted people to be aware of the fact that uh, what we're supporting is a full employment for the for the town in spite of the challenges of trying to hire qualified folks and, and retain and train them. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Any other comments or discussion? <clears throat> Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So the next motion I recommend is a motion to approve the fiscal year 2026 sewer fund budget in the amount of $2,457,392. Second. Second. As you're all aware, that's all borne by the sewer users, so that's a user fee, and that's that. I'll make that motion. All right. Second. Motion made by Ms. Jacoby, seconded by Vice Chair Rice. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I'd recommend that you make a motion to approve the fiscal year 2026 water fund budget in the amount of $3,974,199. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Moved by Mr. Jacoby, seconded by Mr. Brownrigg. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. So the last piece was the revenue, which Mr. Jasper brought up. Um, starting on page 7 of the budget summary document I gave you is the beginning of the revenue. You can <clears throat> look at the far right-hand column. That's the proposed revenue amounts for fiscal 2026. You can just look through those and see what we're proposing for revenue. Um, revenue is a little bit harder to predict. I can't always predict what people are going to do, what they're going to register for vehicles, what they're going to do for permits, what they're going to... You know, what they're going to do. We can control spending, revenue. We certainly make a best faith estimate, but it's, it's, it's a best, best faith estimate at this point in time. Mm -hmm. We tend to try to be a little conservative, so any surprise is an upside, not a downside, so that we're not caught short. This isn't the federal government here. This is the town of Hudson. We're very careful when we do that sort of budgeting. Mr. Jasper. Um, yes, and I, I appreciate that. And, and I know that largely things, um, you know, will, will true up by the time we get to set the tax rate. However, I think it gives somewhat of a, a, a false feeling if we, that the taxes are going up more than they're going to um, if we underestimate. So particularly looking at the meals and, and rentals tax, which in 23 was 2.2, um, in 24 was 2.4, and then in our plan here is one, roughly 1 1.8. Um, I've gone on to the uh, state site, looked at where the revenues are currently. We're right on plan um, with, with that. Um, still leaving a little buffer. I think that um, 2.2 million is is very reasonable to estimate that we would uh, uh, 
we would be receiving for revenues, and I would like to make that motion that under, uh, well, I guess the line is 481, a uh, 4841 in revenues, that that line be increased from 1,793,865 to 2.2 million, an increase of $406,135. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Jasper. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Wary. Oh, quick fingers. Oh. <laughs> His hand went up first. Any discussion? We'll just repeat the numbers. Mr. Walsh? Sure. Um, the increase is $406,135, and that would bring the line to $2.2 million. Even. Thank you. Any other discussion? Oh, Mr. Walsh. I think this is something that our town administrator kind of talked to in the past. This is one of those taxes, if you will, that the legislature committed 40% of that to go back to the towns. <laughs> We've never seen 40%. And that's never happened. <laughs> So again, as Mr. Jasper said, you know, this, things just kind of like trickle down to the to the local level, and we wind up uh, taxpayers paying the dime. So I'm just, you know, I would encourage the if, if the legislature says it's 40 percent, then they should stick to their commitment, and so the taxpayers in this in this state uh, don't pick up uh, the difference. And so I appreciate Mr. Jasper's. Uh, motion to see if we can push that forward okay thank you mr walsh any other discussion points for this particular motion seeing none all in favor aye, aye. all opposed motion carries mr jasper I, i'm not going to uh make any further motions the uh the road toll tax which is the high really largely comes from the highway block or goes to the highway block grant um, was seven hundred five thousand selectmen increased that about a hundred thousand seven hundred five seven hundred thousand is probably so if I may twenty three we got a special one time thing and then yeah, twenty four right. we got another special one time thing so yeah. those were anomalies yeah, I'm not looking to to increase that because I don't think the the they, difference is right. is significant um, so and I don't. I don't see anything else here that really seems to be the often that 406 does make a bit of a difference so so that being the case then you would approve a motion to approve the fiscal year 2026 revenue budget in the amount of 19 million three hundred forty nine thousand three hundred and eighteen dollars one nine three four nine three one eight and I would make that motion I'll second that it motion by <laughs> give it to Jasper yeah. seconded by vice chair rice <laughs> any discussion I did both this time you did. <laughs> <laughs> any discussion seeing none all in favor aye. aye all opposed motion carries so those are the major actions for the budget the operating budgets and the revenue I've also provided you with warrant articles separate section for these these are the articles that the board of selectmen at this point in time are forwarding to the warrant um, there are one two three eleven or twelve of these right now they do not include two collective bargaining contracts we are currently negotiating just keep that in the back of your mind um, I don't believe the committee takes action at this point or recommendations at this point on these warrants but they are here if you want to look at them just so you're aware of what the Board of Selectmen has forwarded. There are no petitions thus far. I would expect we have an engaged citizenry. We'll probably get petitions sometime. They're due, I think, the second Tuesday in January. So this is what the Board has proposed. Again, there will be two, hopefully, collective bargaining agreements. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, Vice Chair Rice. What are they going to do at Lowell and Birch? So, you know, we're Belknap, and I'm not the engineer, so I'm not the expert, mm -hmm. but basically make that a throughway with a signalized intersection, Lowell, Birch, Belknap, and fixed drainage. Okay, I gotcha. Hmm. Um, since I see the uh, 
You want to? You have a second? I have a follow-up, follow but he's well, not going to know. I was just wondering how long that was going to take. If I would estimate. Through. Well, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, on the article itself, we probably identified that it's <coughs> a non-lapsing article that will that will stay in effect till 2030. Because when you're working with the state and the various agencies you have to work with, mm -hmm. we plan on it probably being five years till it's complete. of my existence is the traffic in this town, I kid you not. And I just see that creating more, but I understand it has to be done. Do you have another follow-up question on this? I have nothing else. All right. Um, since I see the uh, fire chief is in the room, I would invite him up to the, uh, the table so that uh, he can talk to the warrant articles that apply to the fire department. Which the first one would be Article D, which is the first one. So Article A, B, and C are the three um, operating budgets. So that's why we start with D. Very good. So good evening and welcome, Chief Tice. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. How are you, everyone, tonight? They're good. I warmed them up for you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so, so we do have a, a warrant article to hire four firefighters. Um, this would be for Central Station to increase our staffing there as part of a, what I would hope would be a multi-year plan to put another company in service. Um, when we think about what we need for response, it's um, what do we need for our major calls and then what do we need for multiple calls. So as our call volume has increased, the odds or the, or the, the occurrence of having multiple calls at one time has increased and we find ourselves quite often with two or three calls happening at the same time, which is stretching our resources. So um, the idea is to be able to add uh, one a year for the next few years based on what people are willing to support. So we could put, have, um, right now we staff uh, all three stations, cross man, everything. So what that means is at Station 4 on Lowell Road and at Station 1 on Robinson Road, and uh, they, they cover the engine and the ambulance. So whatever the call is first, if it's a fire call, they take the engine. If it's a medical call, they take the ambulance. So when we have one call, we lose the other piece or, or, the, or, the, other, or the other unit that, to respond. Central Station, they do the same thing. They cover an ambulance, engine, the squad, the, the tanker, and the ladder. So whatever the call comes in for is what they take. So we also find ourselves quite often responding to either responding back to the station to grab the right piece of apparatus because we're already out with a different apparatus or responding on a call with the wrong apparatus. Uh, several times the squad, which is just a little rescue truck with a very small water tank and a um, uh, not a very um, useful pump. It was meant for brush fires and uh, car fires and car accidents to stand by has been first due to building fires. So my hope is that we can staff more apparatus and staff less apparatus by cross staffing and have a permanent ambulance, have a permanent engine at some point. So that's why I'm asking for more staffing. Thank you, Chief Tice. Uh, Mr. Jasper. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. And I, I'm going to preface this by saying I, I going into this intending to support this warrant article. So the questions that I'm going to ask are going are not in the negative. They're they're going to be to try to help boost your uh, okay. your your case here, because you know this is we're we're working towards 14 people mm -hmm. per shift. So a lot of personnel, and I'm it's probably warranted with what's going on. You don't have a lot of detail in, in, in terms of when we have those multiple calls. I know that the department, at least 20 odd years ago, kept really good records about when our calls were occurring, when those were. And all I'm going to ask is that you provide to us and ultimately to the voters a lot more detail about when we're having those multiple calls, when you're having those shortages. You know, and I recognize, hey, 
mutual aid is great for some things, but you can't rely on mutual aid on a daily basis. That's for those structure fires or really horrific accidents. But I think you know what you what you've got in here um, is good. But I I'm pretty sure you could make a much better case by actually pulling out the data and showing us. And I will do the best I can with that. Our IMC, we, we can't pull out without a manual process. Like it won't run a report for us of overlapping calls, so it would be a manual process. Um, we'll look at that again, and I'll try to look at, at least between now and the time voting, is, is there a way that we can track it, even if it's a manual method? We do have method. quite a bit of time between now and when we'll be voting on Warren articles and... Um, you know, and then before we get to deliberative session. So whatever data you can. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly look at that. And, and, and certainly mutual aid is, uh, it is there for use, but what we're seeing, it's not just Hudson, it's everybody around us is, is growing and, and it, no, nobody's looking to th Yeah, in, do in a lot, putting so. in how many times you had to call in a mutual aid ambulance, mutual aid engine, any of those things. I'm just looking for that data that will Yeah, will we can work on that, support. absolutely supportive so please you know I'm, I'm not I'm not being critical and I and I don't see any reason why I wouldn't be supporting this at this time but no and I appreciate your comments thank you All right. um, Mr. Kobe yeah to that end I thought it was it's been really fascinating that um, it's been posted um, quite frequently on the firefighter Facebook page when this overlap has occurred so I agree um, with Mr. Jasper that that any context as to how many times that has occurred would be really helpful because there are many people in the community who have been seeing those posts. So we know it's happening, but if we can have that data, I think it would really help for this Warren article. Okay, we'll take a, we'll take a look at that and try to come up with something the best we can to, to be able to show that. Mr. Walsh. Chief's first. Mm. Mr. Walsh. I beg your pardon. You're the curmudgeon. <laughs> just two comments, I guess. One is, uh, I'd mentioned previously, the, you know, just the current openings that are in the budget now. There are four fire, fire EMTs, there's a fire captain, and support services. I agree with Mr. Jasper. You, you, you know, I, we can see the, the need for this. My question would be, what if you phase this in? Let's say you put this in, and with a with a strike point of trying to hire these uh, the last six months of the year. So in other words, this article gets cut in half to 270 or 200. You see what I'm saying? This is assuming you're going to hire them through a full year. My, would it make sense possibly to target, given the recruitment you're going to have anyway, but the recruitment would, would happen with a target of of maybe hiring these like in the towards the end of the second quarter or the beginning of the third quarter to move this down a little bit to to make it a little bit more palatable I guess for uh, for voters to consider knowing that next year the following year would be a full load for for the department just just a question I'm certainly not going to turn my nose up to staffing for half a year moving forward as you know if that was a if that was a concern obviously the sooner we can get them the, the better off we are um, we will be hiring just we have four firefighters that I expect to be starting in December to take those openings so we will be back up to full staff or very nearly full staff depending upon a couple of other things um, in December or really January they'll be starting on shift thank you any other questions for uh, Chief Price? Mr. Jasper? Not really a question, just you, you'll be doing better than, than I am if you can keep your staff full for, for any period of time. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's a time challenge. There, it's, it, it, it's a challenge, and there's certainly s some dynamic situations that may affect that, so I don't know how long we'll stay that way, but um, it, it, we're, we're going to be in the best shape that we've been in in, in several years come uh, December, January. All right, very good. Chief has Article G. Okay. It's funding a mosquito control program. I'm sure you've all heard about Tripoli and West Nile virus and the 
uh, occurrence in, the, in our immediate area. So some number of years ago, we had a mosquito control program. Given that, that seemed to abate a bit. Money was moved into another area. Now he's looking to bring it back because it appears that the risk and the threat is greater. So he put together a warrant article for funding to start up a mosquito program. Basically, you're looking at larva sighting, um, trying to get them before they hatch. So there's, there's areas you can attack. And I'm not sure if you're doing any spraying. So it, 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 yeah, it would be dependent upon what um, what they found. What they found. Um, so if you remember, several you know, a couple years ago, as we were trying to level fund the budget and we looked at what the weather forecast, the long-term climate forecast was to be more dry, number of mosquitoes would be expected to be decreased. It had been several years. Uh, 2014 was the last year we had any human cases of any of the uh, mosquito-borne illnesses. So we moved away from doing that program and, and used that money elsewhere in the budget. Um, this year, uh, with the reemergence of the Triple E, I had several people reach out to me and express concern that we weren't doing anything. Um, so I thought I would bring this forward and really put it through the, the budget process and let the people decide if they wanted to, to fund this or not. Um, but <clears throat> it would start um, the typical season. Now it would be, you know, we wouldn't be starting until July if it got approved. But the typical season, they start in the spring um, uh, trapping. And inspecting what they catch for flies. There's, I don't know how many, but there's a lot of different species of mosquitoes, and not all of them carry diseases. So they would be looking for those that do carry the disease, and if they found them, they would start with the larva side in public access areas uh, where they breed to try to cut the number of mosquitoes being born down. And then later in the season, if they found adult mosquitoes uh, that were um, carrying uh, the diseases, they would recommend spraying in, in those areas to try to kill the, as many adult mosquitoes as possible to keep the transmission down. And that's what this program would be. Uh, Mr. Jasper. I assume that you're going to be using a, a private company to run this program. Yes. Yeah, this yeah, would be a Training contract. Training firefighters <laughs> to trap mosquitoes. Okay. No, yeah, no. Yeah. This is outside <laughs> our wheelhouse. This would be a yeah, private contractor. Mr. Walsh. Thanks, Jim. So, Chief, you know, I, maybe I'm looking at the, the folks, the mosquito guys out there that say the efficacy of a program like this, if you do it but your neighbor doesn't do it, it doesn't, make, it, it doesn't impact that much. But what you're talking about, I think, is more specific targeted areas rather it, it, than yeah, I mean, I, oh, sorry, certain areas of Hudson can be kind of swampy. And we all know that. But. <laughs> Not yeah. the budget committee. Let's <laughs> <laughs> squash. Yeah, it's, it's, it's certainly, you can't. They're, they're not going to go from Johnson, border to border. Yeah, they're not going to go border to border and spray and test. It, it's public access areas. Um, certainly, if people on their private property wanted to do it, they'd be able to do it. The more people that did it, the more um, effective it would be. But that is certainly a, um, a drawback. If there's, you know, depending upon how many people are doing it to, to really provide protection. And if they did find them, they, they, their spraying would be limited to um, public access areas, parks, that sort of thing. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief while we have them? So one article K is um, capital reserve funding. So a little different this year because he has three capital reserve funds that we wanted to put money into, we combine them, hopefully to shorten the warrant a little bit. Um, these are, again, all fire, so all three fire are put into one warrant article. I mean, it kind of made sense, again, trying to just shorten the warrant a little bit. So as part of the document, when you look at number K, I also included on page 22 what the balance of those funds are. So if somebody says, what do you have? Well, if you go to page 22, you can see highlighted the three funds that he has. Again, apparatus, equipment, um, repairs, refurbishment, all these things are very expensive. So what we're trying to do is save now so we can avoid paying more later. Do we have any questions on 
this particular Warren article. So, Mr. Jasper. And quickly, I haven't got this. This is a, oh, wait a minute. What is it? 220. Yeah, is it, this is an increase of uh, 50000 over what we had put in to these three last year, correct? Correct. Any other questions? Mr. Walsh? Just as a follow-up to Mr. Jasper, so you have 445,952 in the account now with another 150. Have you, are you using any of that this year? Is this part of the additional 50,000 that we're, that you're recommending that we, that we support? No, we don't, we don't have plans for it this year, but we know those expenditures are coming up. Um, in the future, and we're just trying, we're tracking the, the increase in costs and trying to stay up with it a little bit. Um, that way we're not trying to come up with that lump sum at, at the time. Mr. Jasper. Um, it's actually, my memory, it's been a while since we actually refurbished a piece of equipment. We, you know, we have the account saying refurbishment and repair. Money's really gone into repairs, but it seems that we we buy new rather than refurbish so I'm wondering if you are thinking about actual rehabbing any of the equipment or is this title really a misnomer no the idea the intent is when they reach 10 years of service to have whatever refurb what level of research okay. refurb they need at that time <coughs> we're hoping with the quality apparatus that we bought and doing refurb it halfway through its life that we can stretch that life out to 20 years, the last se several, I, I don't remember off the top of my head, um, apparatus that we had, particularly the engines, didn't last 20 years. And we're trying to get the 20-year life expectancy out of them because they're, to buy them has become so expensive that the longer we can make them last, the, the better, you know, the less, less cost <coughs> per year. So that, that, was the, that was the intent when we bought these apparatus. That's good to hear. Thank you. Any other questions on this particular warrant article? All right, seeing none. So that concludes the Chief's articles. <coughs> Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you, and have a good evening. You too. Chief? Just, just <coughs> ask a question, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Chief. Walsh. Since we have the exaction subcommittee, have, <coughs> have, have you approached, are you in the process of requesting that $1,050,000 for public safety from the developer of the logistics center at this point? Yes, we're very close to finishing all the um, requirements before the permit and the permit will be issued, um, I'd say, in the, the, within the next couple weeks, probably a month at the longest. So um, Target has been making those plans to make all those deposits. There's, there's the public safety money, there's um, inspectional services, and then there's uh, some stuff on the planning side that they're, they're working through right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks again, Chief Tice. You're welcome. <clears throat> all right. Are there any other warrant articles that you have to present at this time, Mr. Malizzi? Well, or? there's a whole list of them. I don't know if the board wants to talk about them or not. We'll go through and ask questions at least. Yeah. Why don't we run through them just to yep. make sure real quick? So the next one would be E, which is Lowell Road and Birch Street and intersection improvements. This article was proposed to come from state uh, federal grant and corridor funds, which we collect to be able to do these things. So in this particular case, no tax impact. Um, as I mentioned, it would basically take Lowell Road, Birch Street, and Belknap, an intersection, and signalize it and improve drainage because there's drainage issues there. That's my understanding of the scope of the project. Again, probably at least five years just because by the time you get the federal government, you get the money, you do mm -hmm. this, that, the other, it's two years in. Mm -hmm. Then you got to go get engineering, you got to go get design, then you get to construction, you got to go with the bid. It just takes time. Mr. Jasper? This proposal has been around for quite a long time. Is it old enough to vote yet? Uh, probably older than me and you. But <laughs> 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 I 
Ms. Kennedy. Um, is this the intersection that's proposed that includes um, uh, the town engineer, uh, Mr. Dima, was talking about at a selectman meeting about um, them lining a pipe under so T-bones. that's a, that's that's in, in that's that intersection. But uh -huh. the pipe at T-bones is private property, and that's a private vendor mm -hmm. taking care of a problem in the system. So, if I am understanding correctly, I think they've gone through the permitting. Uh, last I saw, so that work should be eminent. So, <coughs> in essence, there's a drain pipe goes under the T-bones building mm -hmm. that is, in our opinion you know, needs to be repaired, replaced, whatever. So there's a plan to do so, so you can now safely still eat at T-Bones without it, because um, <laughs> so that, that, was, is a, where that was a concern. So but, that's where Second Brook comes in, right? Uh, I believe that's Second Brook over there. Yeah. I live on Glen Drive, and Second Brook is actually an unnamed pond yep. behind uh, So that's a Glen piece, Drive. and then we would obviously do our piece. Our piece, is, my understanding is, is in decent shape, but you can always improve things. Now, when I was on the uh, traffic committee, uh, Mr. Dima was talking about uh, taking the one road and making it, right now you can <coughs> go into Low Road off of there, but that would make that a one way or a dead end or whatever, right? So there by the, the board had a Sousa conversation about field. County Road is the one you're talking about. Oh, yeah. The board at this yeah. point is, taking, is not taking that action, but I think the intention of something like this would work to rectify that as an issue. As we all know, you do not exit south on County Road onto Lowell Road if you can avoid it. Mm -hmm. Right. No. You can go in, don't come out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. When I lived on Belknap, I would actually go down to Central yep. because you yep. just don't want to try to get out Because you know that better. Way. Right. Yeah. But there's people all the time. I all see the time. them I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Anyways. All right. Any other questions on this Warren article? Seeing none, what's the next one? Robinson Pond, Article F, the engineer came to the Board of Selectmen. There's a public boat launch there. It's in pretty rugged shape. It's not very good at all. So it's proposed that we um, work with the state to get a grant, which I believe we're in the process of applying for. If we were to get it, we'd improve the boat launch and the beach area. <coughs> for those of you who go over there, I mean, I think the beach has been pretty unusable. I think some of it's water quality, obviously. But I think the intent is to improve that area as a recreational area. I was wondering if this warrant article could be expanded and let people know what those improvements would be. Like, are they going to include flush toilets? Will they have more sand? Will they have more um, restrict um, uh, dogs? Uh, you know, that type of uh, input. You could certainly have backup, but I'm sure as part of a warrant article, you can only do things that are prescribed by the law and the Department of Revenue and how you write these things. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you can get overly descriptive. <coughs> something that we can do at deliberative sessions? <coughs> it's something that could be talked about at deliberative session. Whether or not anything can be done. Mr. Jasper. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess my concern with, with this is you know, 10 cents on the tax rate. We've got a lot of things. And this is, a, I think, a pretty limited portion of the town that uses this particular beach. I'm not sure that it's going to do anything for the water quality. I know I don't know how many times the pond was, the beach was closed um, in the last few years, but I suspect quite a few because of the water quality. Um, I'm not inclined to support this half million at this time, um, unless there's a lot more information about how we're going to deal with the water, water quality, and um, how many people use this this facility. Because you know, to ask everybody to pay for this if it's like four or five percent of the people in the town using this, um, I don't think that's a Good use of a half a million dollars. So I don't. I'm not asking you for those numbers tonight. Obviously, that's why I'm asking. Um, just saying that coming forward with this, I, I think a little bit more information for the budget committee, which ultimately will trans translate 
for everybody is is warranted. Vice Chair Rice. I'm curious as to how um, how much parking area there is there. The last time I went there, I didn't seem like there was a lot. So there is a limit to the parking. I can't tell you offhand. I but there is a limit. It's a, it's yeah. a certain size parking lot. Okay. Agreed. Um, Ms. Kennedy. Uh, also, uh, Mr. Dima was saying that if we do this, since it's part of a state grant, we would have to open it up to not just residents, mm -hmm. but to everyone as a state park. It would be like be Silver careful Lake to use the at, word state park. We're not opening Hollis. a state park. It's no. a town park right. that we can't restrict access. But we can't restrict access to other people who do not live other in town, like in. it does now. Right. Uh, Ms. Jacoby. So just to clarify a few things, um, this grant, part of it would be improving parking, increasing parking, and limiting and creating and finding out what the limit to the number of people that would be able to use the recreational area at any given time, including boats, boats with trailers, boats without trailers, um, people on the beach, people not on the beach, would all be part of this. <clears throat> Additionally, um, there would be a limit to the number of people that can use it at any one time. Water quality would be improved. That's part something that they've been conservation has been working on for a while. Um, so it's really to raise the funds in order to make it um, a flagship space, recreational space for our community and for anyone else who would be interested in using it. There's also possibly um, Mr. Dima spoke about a fee structure. Um, for those who are not residents, we have to open it to, uh, to non-residents, but there's ways of controlling that um, flow of people and the number of people that have access. So that's all part of what will happen in this um, project. And I think to Mr. Jasper's point, that all needs to be outlined in, in much more detail. Mm -hmm. Mr. Walsh? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm going to show my age here a little bit, but uh, I've lived up in that area since 1974. And many evenings when I would come home from work, we would all go down to the pond and swim and really enjoy it. The rec department had swimming lessons, mm -hmm. and there was just a lot of activity there. So I guess, no pun intended, but the downstream implications for the rec department, is there any... Um, any thought of reconstituting those kinds of activities, or is this going to be a beach that you swim at your own risk, or a boat at your own risk, or you know, I mean, boat at your own risk, obviously. But um, so I was just curious if there's any potential down the stream consideration that the recreation department might utilize this for other activities, whether it's swimming, ice skating, so on and so forth. Mr. Jasper. Um, you know, you talk about expanding parking, I'm quite familiar with, with that area. Uh, I don't know where you could put any more parking unless we're starting to fill in the wetlands because we're really, and I'm going to say, you're lucky if there's, at the boat launch, 10 parking spaces. The trailer. Oh, and it looks like Selectman Morin would it, like to say something. I, I would like to say something as the rep here. Um, Mr. So, so when I say expand parking, we're going to define the parking. Right now, there, things are not defined. You don't know where you can park your um, boat trailer. You don't know where you can park your car. You don't know if you want to go to the beach, where you can park. So it's going to define all of that. So I kind of say increase because not, like, there are not parking spaces defined there. So that's all part of the program. Um, Mr. Jasper. And, and, and again, that, that's all well and good. People seem to do a pretty good job of filling up all the available space. And without paving it, it's always hard to, to actually define. But again, it's such a limited number of people. I'm wondering if we're going to use $500,000 and have a grant is there a better place to put it? Because the more people that are using the beach, <coughs> probably going to be worse on the water quality. A lot of it is probably waterfowl. I'm not sure we're going to 
do to uh, to decrease that. So I'm just looking for a much better defined plan because water quality is something really hard to deal with in a pond that isn't flowing a huge amount of water through it. You get into <coughs> some of the larger lakes, there's water through. This has been a problem that's been going on for about as long as I can remember now, and my memory is pretty long. Hey, go ahead. You mind? Uh, no, absolutely. Please. Thank you. S Selectman Jacoby hit on all the points. I was just at the meeting when the state came down to, to offer this process to us. It is going to, we, we're working on the MS 14 permit, which is going to take care of not only the water problem in the pond, but all the tributaries that come into the pond. So that's being worked on as we speak to increase the uh, water. The design will be also to keep the water that's flowing from the parking lot of the beach and the boat launch into the water, which will also help the quality. Reference to the amount of people that use the pond, Selectman Jasper is correct, but you got to remember that the town took all the lifeguards away from there and there's no other thing, nothing else going on in the pond, so people aren't going there, and the water quality, as you had spoken about, has been an issue. But all of this is to improve that. The parking, they're figuring between 50 and 100 parking spots, but again, that will be regulated. There will be a gate to come in and out. If you don't have a pass, you don't get in. And, that will, and, and the structure that Selectman Jacoby talked about, there will be a different for out-of-town people versus in-town people. What also this grant does, once it opens it up for us, it allows us later on to build f facilities such as bathrooms, a concession stand. We can do all kinds of stuff once we get into this process because basically you fall under the, the state parks and how that whole system works. That's, that's how it's going to work. The boat ramp, just for the fire department alone, will be a huge thing because they're going to put the cement under the water so you'll have a nice smooth thing. Right now, anybody puts their boat in, Robinson Pond takes out a propeller every single time. <laughs> so it will be a real boat ramp. It will be paved. It will be having markings for boats and things like that. So there is a lot of pluses. I understand the, the lack of information, so we'll make sure that we talk to Elvis and, and get that to you. But this, this is going to do a lot for both the boat ramp and the swimming, water quality, and the quality of the beach itself. I, like I, I appreciate you. Let, before I go, if you have a question, uh, I was just going to say, oh God, it was probably getting close to 20 years ago now, Steve. You might remember we had looked at actually putting the summer rec program out there and mm -hmm. doing a lot of these things, having a having a building out there, and there were a lot of negatives to that and I hope we can overcome those. Water quality is something. Water quality is the biggest problem. Yeah. <laughs> biggest problem, so I'll really be interested to see the details of how that will improve because that in my mind, I know there is parking inside. Now when you're talking about if you don't have a pass, mm -hmm. you don't get in, that means more, more staffing, which is not you know year-round staffing, so it's probably not expensive, but I think this is, these are the things we, we need to see. Um, but yeah, I, I just look at it that if we don't have something that is pretty much a guarantee that the water quality will improve, um, this is all for for naught because that's why many of the things that you talked about I think ended out there is because there were too many days when the beach had to be closed, mm -hmm. and and we can put it, you know, if this is. A, a 50% match, we can put a million dollars out there, and if in the whole of July and August the water quality is so bad we can't open it, it's just wasted money except for the limited boat launch. The engineer can answer your questions on the water quality, and going back to the, you know, the, the hiring of personnel, that will be a gate system that you either scan or you okay. so there won't be any but a gatekeeper per se. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Walsh. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, just one quick thing about water quality. If, if you look at the outflow of Robinson Pond, I'll call it the east side of Lawrence Road, where the stream goes down uh, from the pond, that is overchoked with purple loosestrife. The water flow through there is just choked off. So to 
I don't know if the Conservation Commission is looking at maybe mitigating that to improve the water flow out of the pond uh, across uh, Lawrence Road would would be something that uh, they should look at to to see if that could be addressed to, to try and help with the water quality as well. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments on this particular Warren article? Seeing none, what do we have next? Article H, which is the Property Revaluation Capital Reserve Fund funding. So as you're well aware, we are required by uh, law to revaluate <coughs> our property in town at least once every five years. I believe we did it last in 2022. So 2027 will be the upcoming, will be the next reval. So we like to put money aside ahead so that it's not a big, huge expense all at once because doing a reval can cost a few hundred thousand dollars. So last year, this year, we're looking for $25,000 to go into the capital reserve fund specifically set up for that purpose. Any questions on this particular article? Seeing none, the next. I, Article I is to uh, put money into the VAC on truck capital reserve, uh, VAC on truck replacement capital reserve fund. You've seen the truck around town. It services both our drain system and our sewer system. Basically keeps things flowing properly. It basically vectors, vacuums out debris, whatnot. So expensive piece of equipment. Again, we put money aside. Half of the money comes from the sewer fund, so the sewer users pay for half. Half the money comes from the taxpayer. That's the drainage side of it. So it's a split 50-50 um, payment. So 15000 of this is from taxes, 15000 is from sewer users. Hmm. Any questions on War Article? Hi. Next one. Article J is drainage capital reserve. If you recall, last year we established a drainage capital reserve fund. Through some of the heavier rains we were getting, we realized our system is getting old. And in some cases, it's undersized. Um, so it's all underground. You don't see most of it, but when it stops working, you'll know it. <laughs> we had a failure up on Adams. Is it Adams Drive? Yeah, we had a failure up on Adams Drive that basically took all the money that we raised last year to repair, to fix, to replace. So the intent is, again, to try to keep up or keep on top of this. And so it looks like a lot of money, but it doesn't go very far when you're talking underground structures. Any questions on this Warren article? Seeing none, what's next? So skipping over K because we already spoke to that. So the next one would be N. N. So this is to establish a new fund. DPW, dump trucks, vehicles, they're pretty expensive pieces of equipment. So the intent is to get ahead of either repairing things, i.e. big ticket repairs, or replacing uh, vehicles. Again. A dump truck, I think nowadays is four thousand dollars. If it's not a nickel, mm -hmm. they are they are not cheap. Um, we we are very efficient. We bought the ten wheel dump trucks, which allows us to have longer plow routes. In the olden days, you might have a six wheeler. You had to keep going back to the shop to go get more sand or salt. You had shorter routes. This is a with a bigger dump truck, you can do a much longer route. Longer route, you don't need as many guys. Um, so it's an efficiency thing. We have, I believe, 12 10 wheelers, um, and that's kind of important in the next article, or two articles away. Basically, that's a big part of our fleet. So we're just looking to keep ahead of it because this is New England. Things rust, things rot out. We do try to keep on top of it and stretch it as long as we can, but we have to be safe about it. Um, so we're just looking to establish so we can start procuring this equipment without getting the big, big bill. Any questions on this Warren article? Uh, Mr. Walsh. Mr. Chairman, I think, you know, we've, at just a general comment in the town, we've done a very good job of, of keeping after the police and the fire departments for equipment and so on and so on and so forth. Public Works is the one that's kind of been left behind, You're kind of like the poor mm -hmm. cousin or something. Uh, but if we don't have the roads that are, are in good shape, and maintain, we can have the best police force and fire department, but if they can't get on the roads. Um, I, this is in, in incredibly important for, for the town to consider. There's another one that's already in the budget, 
if I'm not mistaken, right? It's buried in there between so, the different departments. So, let's, so this would be actually... This is establishing a fund, so going forward, we would be able to mitigate or minimize or manage the cost of these big ticket... <clears throat> this doesn't just include dump trucks. Right. Front end loaders, uh, excavators. <laughs> Those things are really expensive, and it's not getting any cheaper. I mean, when we get to the Public Works dump truck replacement, um, we bought dump trucks in... Early 2000s. 2001, 2006. Yeah, we bought, we bought four, and then we bought another four. Well, the four we bought in 2001, we, we framed and we did some repairs, and it was like 40000 To do those same repairs on the 2006s is like 80000 mm -hmm. and up. Metal, labor, it all, it, it's just, we all know, it's skyrocketed. So you start looking at, is it worth repairing this, or do you actually replace it? Because when you're repairing it, you're not getting another 20 years out of it. You're getting... 10 years, 15 years, <coughs> you know, we salt sand, the conditions, the use, you know, and again, like Mr. Walsh said, you get police, you get fire, DPW is sort of the poor cousin, but you'll know it if you don't have it. <laughs> Any other questions on this particular warrant article? Seeing none. Um, Warren Article O is a modest uh, request to put money to the Benson Park Renovation Capital Reserve Fund. It's a $10,000 request, which I think the last several years they've asked for $10,000. Just so when they look at projects in Benson Park that they have the money to be able to do those things. I'm not sure there's anything specific. I don't know. Are there any specific Benson Park projects? No, nothing no. I know of. But I think they're, you know, again, things are more expensive. We want to keep up with it. It's a beautiful resource for the town. Um, we just want to keep it that way. Any questions on this Warren article? Seeing none. So the last one is Article P, dump trucks, public works dump trucks. So as we talked about, as the board talked about, the 2006s, um, we bought four. One's in the budget. I think one can be refurbed. Two are going to be either out of service or we're going to have to basically overhaul them to the tune of 80 something thousand dollars plus and then also buying us a few more years so the director came to the board and said I'd like to lease purchase new vehicles to replace those Mr. plus there's more efficiency and when I say more efficient the, the, there's just you know um, improvements to the actual trucks fuel economy drivability drivability Mr. Jasper um, I'm going to ask the Board of Selectmen to consider modifying this warrant article. First of all, to state how many years this is and to specify that it's a lease a purchase. I think we always did that in the past because right now this is just saying representing the first year of how many, I don't know. And to the average voter and to me, it's going, it looks like, okay, you're just going to lease them and then turn them in. We will do that. I think we could just do that yeah. to clarify the language because we know what the board's intent is, so we'll yeah. fix the language. I think that's really, yeah. really important. And I, I think perhaps anyhow, and council might pick up on this, if you intend for this to be a continuing appropriation like with a contract, the employee contract, you've got to specify, you know, what the out years are. So I think, you know. This will if, go to our legal piece. Yeah, so. but so, I, I, I support it. I just think it needs the, the detail that right now is lacking. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jasper. Mr. Jacoby. Um, just to clarify and make sure the public knows, there is one truck in the budget. Yes, I, I think I said yep, that. I just yes. want to reiterate that. So one truck is being appropriated within the budget as we um, motioned earlier. And so this is for two additional. I think that can be confusing to the public. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other questions in general for the town on the budget? Mr. Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know, you know, the old saying is you watch the pennies and the dollars take care of themselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer in capital reserve funds. Uh, they're strategically important on a going forward basis. I'm also a big believer in, in, in using 
uh, unexpended fund balance. So as we get closer to the end of the year, I know there's already 1.1 million uh, from the fund balance that's going to be uh, utilized. But I, I would like to know as we get closer to the del deliberative session what the, what the projection is for this year because I, I would really sincerely like to see maybe some of those funds also being allocated to some of these uh, capital reserve funds to try and uh, minimize the, the impact to the taxpayer. Just, that's just a general comment for consideration. Thank you. Any other questions or comments at this time? Seeing none, Mr. Malizia, thank you for your time and thank please you. pass our sincere appreciation and to the rest of the employees at Town Hall. Do. And happy Thanksgiving if I don't see you. You too. Thank you. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. All right. Is there any old other old business that any member of the committee would like to bring forward at this time? Wow. Seeing none. Uh, our next meeting will be Wednesday, the 4th of December. Should be in this room. Uh, we will be kicking off the SAU portion of our budget review. I know, congratulations. We've, we've made it, it well, kind of halfway through. Um, so I guess if nobody has any other business to discuss, I'll go around the room and I'll start on this side. Ms. Boucher. Well, thank you. I'm just looking forward to um, getting through these warrant articles and um, the, the SAU coming up. Um, I think that the Budget Committee will, you know, spend a lot of time deliberating over, over these, so we have a lot to chew on. Thank you. Ms. Jacoby. I once again just want to thank the Budget Committee for their um, sincere thoughtfulness in looking at the town um, budget and um, I really thank you all because this was um, a really um, excellent process for me and and having this be the first time being on the budget committee I really appreciate all that and I know we have the SAU but so far thank you <laughs> Mr. Jasper I have nothing <laughs> wait, wait. Is that in the minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Walsh. Uh, I'm, I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Kennedy. I'm looking forward to the SAU um, coming before the Budget Committee with uh, mixed uh, feelings being on the school board. But uh, I've seen so, such excellent work and questions from the Budget Committee that I know we will be dealt with in a sincere and thoughtful manner. Thank you. Mr. Brownrigg. So I just want to put out to um, to the town and people who are watching, um, it's going to be a reminder, of course, over the next couple of weeks, but deliberation is for the town side is February 1st, and deliberation for the school side is February 8th and voting day is March 11th. And the reason why I bring that up, um, I like to see more people get involved in the deliberations, you know, year after year. Um, when we go to deliberations, it's always the same people. Um, it would be great to have more people involved at deliberations. It would be even better for um, everyone that, uh, we had over 14,000 people that voted in the general election, which was awesome. It would be great to have that kind of a number on a voting day on March 11th. So um, I'd like for you all to talk to your friends, family, and neighbors about uh, making sure that you attend to deliberations and voting day on March 11th. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Brownrigg. Vice Chair Rice. I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. I love it. It's my Ooh. most favorite holiday. So <laughs> that's, that's what I've got. Excellent. Well, I want to thank each and every member of the committee. We've actually made it through the town portion. I'm looking forward to working with each and every one of you on the SAU budget in the future. And, of course, I wish everybody a very 
happy and safe holiday for Thanksgiving. And I will entertain a motion to adjourn at so this moved. time. Second. Motion made by Vice Chair Rice, seconded by Mr. Brownrigg. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? How come nobody ever opposes that motion? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Meaning adjourned.